Okay, um, excited to be back. Good to see you all in person. Good to be back to a normal press conference and really excited about the first, first week. First opportunity to get going. Um, home game with Louisiana Monroe. Look forward to seeing uh, Terry Bowden. As I said in my tweet, uh, my condolences to, to Terry and to the entire Bowden family. I had the pleasure of working at Florida State for three years and walked by Coach Bowden every day. Uh, of course, it was a bronze statue of him in the front of our building, but uh, but walked past that statue every day. And, and if you're a coach or if you've been around this business, you have nothing but respect uh, for for Bobby Bowden, the Bowden family, um, what he's done. And it was an honor for me to coach there for three years and walk past that statue. So uh, looking forward to seeing Terry. Um, he has a great staff. Um, Obviously, Rich Rodriguez uh, being his offensive coordinator and Zach Alley, his defensive coordinator, guys uh, that have been around, um, very, very good coordinators. So, uh, obviously, it's going to be a much improved football team. And uh, we're excited about us, just us getting back on the field. Um, really excited to have the stadium at full capacity. So, thank you to the fans that already bought tickets and that you're going to buy tickets and pack that stadium. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to get going. New, new offense coordinator for us. It'll be our first, uh, you know, uh, obviously first true test. We've had some scrimmages, but to get out there and play a full game under a new system, uh, it's exciting for all of us. Of course, uh, defensively, we, expectations are high. We pride ourselves on uh, continuing to play great defense, and, and we challenge our players to do that. Um, so really just... You know, like like we always say, game one. Everybody's anxious. It's always a long off season. Um, you know, through the winter, through spring, players uh, busting their tail all summer. So everybody's excited to getting back out there. So um, you know, we're we're you know really can't wait to get going. I know there's been a few headlines this summer, and um, you know. You know, as you know, we pride ourselves on on having a disciplined football team, and we've done things as well as we can for a long time, and we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to do things right and have discipline on our football team. Um, you know how Mitch Barnhart is and Dr. Capilouto. They do things um, extremely, you know, very disciplined, and um, and I appreciate them and, and appreciate their support, and I, I appreciate the university and the way they went through a thorough investigation and, uh, you know, and, and cleared our players and the way they went about it and gave them a fair process. I greatly appreciate them. Um, if I have ev any evidence uh, whatsoever um, that our players are doing something that, that needs to be addressed, we have no problem uh, with addressing that and, and disciplining our players. So we'll continue to... Um, evaluate that process and, and see how it plays out. Um, we've been patient. Our players have been patient. Um, and you have to to trust the system. You know, we, we um, that gets that gets hard. You know, our players have, have been out a long time. They missed uh, probably 13 weeks, 14 weeks uh, of, of time on the field right now with this uh, situation. So uh, I have to believe in the system. Um, you know, during the summer, we brought in a, a speaker, uh, Denny Butler, who spent time, uh, you know, exonerating wrongfully com convicted people. And uh, Edwin Chandler, who spent time on death row, was in there uh, with us and talked to our team. It was very powerful. Um, you know, really appreciate uh, Chief Weathers, Chief Monroe. They were there as well. And and uh, very supportive and very uh, comforting to our players that, that know it's not always personal. There's, there's flaws in the system at times, and uh, we have to trust that system, and we will. Um, uh, but I also uh, stand, stand by our players until uh, I have uh, you know, the evidence that, that tells me otherwise. Um, so I hope to have all the players out there, but I don't know. That's out of my hands. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Questions? Coach, what is the most important message you want to get across to the players as you prepare for this Saturday? Well, 
Well, there's there's many things that we need to discuss as far as the, the, the biggest thing is, is early in the season, uh, players want to do too much. They, 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 they want the, you know, every play is a touchdown, every play is a, a stop or a sack or whatever, and, you, and, you, and you, you fundamentally sometimes lose sight of things. And, uh, you know, I uh, was at my son's first game, and, and I noticed that, you know, with the high school, it's the same way. You know, you want the end result right now. And uh, it was interesting. It just brought that to my attention right there, that, that it's truly about fundamentally, you know, doing the things necessary to take care of your responsibility. Players always want to do too much too early. And uh, that could be a problem. So it's truly one play at a time. Work on all the things we've worked on fundamentally. And, uh, you know, trust your teammates and execute. You know, it takes all 11 uh, on every play. And, and sometimes early on, it's, it's, it's not for a lack of want to. But uh, you just have to be very disciplined to do the things necessary and count and trust on the people next to you to do their job. Uh, so it's, you know, I always talk about primary, secondary. I always look at the alignment early. You know, it's like they all want to do what they, they don't go make the big play, but you got to take care of your primary responsibility first and then go make plays. Mark, you're talking about wrongfully convicted people and examples there. Are you confident enough to bring any of those guys back at this point? I got to be careful in how I say it. I, I want to, you know, I want to, but, um, you know, we'll see. So, uh, in discovery situation, mm -hmm. um, thank God back in March. Uh, so, I guess for me, is it in the judicial system, what comes first, the recovery of the, of, of, of the uh, grand jury? Well, Lonnie, that, that's a, you asked me a, a question last week that I thought about afterwards as well. And, um, you know, it's hard for me. I have to, um, you know, I have to respect the system, and I do. Um, I completely trust our prosecutors. I, I completely ch trust our chief. You know, um, you know they're, they're not responsible for the investigation. Yeah, so, I mean, th th this went on March, I want to say March 3rd, Tony? March, early March. First I, mean, March. I mean, March 3rd, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's hard. Again, i got to bite my tongue. Um, I just know what's been done to our players. I'm not sure what's been done to others. Mark, the... We're past the threshold. Yeah, we're past 85 percent. Was that pretty easy to, to come out and guys kind of start buying in, or was there a point in time they started buying into that? They uh, were. They wanted to do it. Um, I I wasn't sitting there selling it. You know, I was giving them information and being factual with information and having experts talk about it and things of that nature. And uh, guys want to play. You know, they want to play football. You talk about unveiling a new offensive assignment. Will you guys script several plays to start the game, or are you even a favorite, favorite game? Um, we have scripted in the past, you know, so um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all for what Liam wants to do, you know, so. Um, you know, as a, as a defensive play caller for a lot of years, I've done things many different ways, and uh, I'll trust what he wants to do. But, yes, so there, there will definitely be some thoughts, and exactly, you know, some of it depends on down a distance and things of that nature, but uh, there will be some things scripted, yeah. Mark, given the fact that you played 10 conference games last year plus the bowl, toughest schedule in the history of U.K. football, how does that help you coming into this year, if at all? Well, you know, I'm not sure. You know, like as I tell you, every year is different. Uh, it's hard to go back to last year. You know, we've been well documented. We're past it. It was tough. I mean, it's a little different opening up on the road at Auburn, you know, than, than uh, opening up at home is, is good with a, with a non-SEC school. Mark, when we talk to the players, they're all ready to go. They have been for the past couple of weeks, and yet coaches always need more time. You can always prepare more. What signs and signals of your team show you that they're ready to go? Um, I just, 
like the way they've been uh, approaching the entire camp, um, really uh, focusing on the day and the process and trying to get better each and every day. Again, I know that's boring, um, but you can't, you know, you can't have that end result. You know, it's just like a game. Like I said, it's just like my son's game. I could just see it in them. You know, maybe we're supposed to win, but it's got to be this to this automatically. No, it's one play, one possession at a time. Everybody wants to get ahead of themselves, and uh, we can't get ahead of ourselves. You know, we got a week of preparation, and then it'll truly be one play at a time. I know, again, that's boring, but that's the truth. You, you know, it's just the truth. Mark, in a game where you have been favored to such as the whole game, there's a couple schools of thought, at least in my opinion, if there's some kind that you come out and you – Well, I don't think there'll be enough plays to run everything that we we have. So it's a little bit of both there. You know, the game is a fundamental game. There's plays that they know we're going to run. For us, it's a bigger challenge. You know, with Rich Rod, uh, you know, being around for a while, uh, being out last year, um, you know, you're you're you know unsure. Uh, which way he'll go. His son, Rhett, is a heck of a football player, knows his system. But you know Rich, Rich can go a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we have to look at – we go all the way back and watch Arizona. You know, we watched Old Miss. Uh, we watched things that have hurt us that we think Rich can easily morph into. So we've had to do a lot of preparation. Uh, for that, the same thing with their defense coordinator. He comes from Boise, uh, but he has a strong Clemson background and hired guys from Clemson. So, um, you know, we have to look at uh, a lot of Clemson as well. So we, you know, there's, you know, a few more unknowns for us to look at, you know. So we're, you know, really concentrating on ourselves. But we're, we're you know, obviously every game is, is super important. We're not leaving anything in the bag. We're going to do whatever we have to do in every game to go win the game. Uh, but obviously we have a lot of different change-ups, you know, as you take place throughout the year. Could you talk about the emergence of Eli Cox? Yeah, Eli just is, um, you know, he kind of personifies what we, we like to be here in our program. You know, it's one of those guys that just develops and just works and just gets better every day. And uh, you got to love and respect that. You know, he's, he's extremely smart. He's very strong. Um, you know, he'll, he'll do anything we ask him to do, and he works, works at it. And so he's a great teammate and uh, getting better. Where Mikel Kratis is and his recovery. Where what? Mikel, where he is and his recovery. Yeah, he's, he's not out there at all right now. So he's still, um, you know, I'll give you an update week to week, but definitely out right now. We got that depth chart shake up there at last night. Well, I guess what, what is DeMarcus showing? Uh, we're still high on Chauncey, and DeMarcus has been a, a, a steady player for us as well. You know, they're both very good players. They're both going to play. So, we'll see. Mark, how have you seen – the other day Vince talked about Wondell came in and wanted to earn his spot. He wanted all his teammates to know it just wasn't handed to him. How have you seen him kind of embrace being the face of a program, all the pressure that comes around with coming home and all well, he, he, he does that every day as far as, um, you know, doesn't say boo. You know, as far like he works. He works hard. He puts his head down. He works at his craft every day. And and, and uh, you, you've heard me talk about that over the years with different players. Everybody finds their voice at different times. I'm sure he will be, uh, you know, use his voice when he needs to at times and has. Uh, but uh, he leads uh, heavily by example as well, being a new guy coming in here, and he works very hard every day and uh, really gets better and he improves. It's amazing to see him, um, the way he's sharpened his skill at wide receiver. We all know he's a talented guy with the ball in his hand, but uh, he's really developing into a great wide receiver. He's, he's very talented, and, but I love his work ethic. We see you as a tough, hard-nosed, boring football coach. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thanks a lot. Who says that? Get back to work. Uh, 
Uh, with all the emphasis on the mental health of student athletes nowadays, how has your approach to dealing with your players' emotional health changed? Are you softer now than you were when um, you first started? No, I wouldn't say much has changed in that regard. I think you, you know, I, I think, um, you know, it's 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 in vogue now to be um, relatable to players. I've never shied away from that. I've always been that way. You know, I, you could go back however many years I've been doing, a long time, 20-some years, you know, and that's just, uh, that's it's who I am. I'm a, I believe in relationships. I believe in being close to your players. Uh, but, you know, when you make those deposits, you can take it out when you need to be forceful because they, they trust you. They know you believe in, you know, believe in them, and when I'm hard on them, they know it's for a reason. You know, so it's just always been the way I've been. Uh, so, you know, I don't feel like I've changed much other than the fact that you do naturally change year in and year out just with, with uh, you know, trying to improve, trying to work on blind spots, trying to be better in any ways you can. Uh, other than that, I don't feel like my total approach has changed, you know. All right, you're ready to throw someone under the bus. How pleased are you with how the freshmen have come along? Yeah, I think, you know, the freshman class in general, you know, what I like about them is, is we just feel like they're all, they're all going to be good players. You know, when you recruit that many players, when you bring them in, you're, you, you know, you maybe have one or two that you feel like are far behind. And that's not really the case. This group is solid top to bottom, um, going to be really good players. Uh, some guys are going to help us, you know, sooner than others. Uh, but uh, but very good, you know, very talented, and uh, you know Jagger had an opportunity to run, you know, run some with the ones, and we want. I, I was happy to see that because sometimes when you're communicating and you're with older guys, it brings you along faster, and uh, especially when you play inside there. Like I told you before, the closer you get to that ball, you know, the the faster things happen. You know, you play center and you play guard, you know, things happen quick, man. There's move, There's a lot of things going on very, very quickly, and that sometimes could take some time. You know, tackle, the further you get away from the football, you know, it's still very hard in skill. You know, you got to be very skilled to do it, uh, but uh, sometimes mentally it's a little easier approach. And so, uh, you know, uh, Jagger's a guy that's really come along, and all the, the other guys we've been talking about, you know, done well. Mark, what do you know about the cutting part of your uh, special teams? Yeah, Wilson's been a little bit dinged up with his back, but uh, but he's um, you know he'll be back out there today, and you know hopefully he'll be you know hitting hitting the ball well. But uh, but you know you know Matt's been around for a while, so Chance will continue to do the kickoffs, and uh, Zach will still be the kickoff return guy, and punt return uh, will rotate. You know both of those guys are very good. You know with uh, obviously Wandell and Josh are both really good return guys. Mark, what have you learned about Neil from working with him and more aware of him in the Well, I don't know what I've learned. I, I, I mean, good question there. Uh, let me be a little more direct. Quit bouncing around there. I think, you know, one thing would be I, I'm, I appreciate his relationship, the way he communicates with the players. I really like that. I really like his energy. Uh, I, he's very believable. He's very positive. Uh, players relate to him, and uh, that that breeds confidence, you know, within within the the offensive room. Is, is, is the run game that we've talked a lot about throwing ball and everything this offseason? What does that look like? Well, what are you expecting that to look like compared to past year? I mean, we've obviously gotten used to seeing you guys run the ball really well, but in what way? Like, how will that maybe look different? You know, do you want me do you want to just forward this to the? <laughs> uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> It'll look a little different. <laughs> I think yeah, I think anybody knows. I mean, they they know what his system is. They know what it, they know what it's going to be. I mean, obviously, we'll run the ball a li little differently. We won't be. We were. Uh, if you look conceptually, we are a very tight football team. Very tight. You know, tight. You know, inside zone, split zone, power, counter. You know, there'll be some things. You know, we will run outside zone for the first time, so that that that'll be different and some other ways. But uh, that's basic. But but th they should know that. Mark, when you was not here, mm -hmm. he said you wanted to work on leadership qualities and, and relationships. Pardon me. 
when Will got here, he said mm. one thing, a couple things he did work on were leadership and building relationships with his coaches, something mm. he didn't do at Penn State. What have you seen from him in, in, in that area? I, I've just seen a, a strong leader, a strong presence. Um, again, he's he's very authentic, what, what you really like about him, and uh, he works at it. He's in there a lot. He's in there watching film. You know, a few times this summer when we've had recruits on campus or he happened to pop in my office and just watching him interact with other people, watching him interact with, with recruits, parents, anybody, he's uh, he's... He's, you know, handles himself like a grown man, and uh, you know, so you need that out of your quarterback, you know. So he's very strong. I know we talk a lot about the new things, mm -hmm. but done this now nine years. Do you still get the well, nerves, excited, or whatever? Do, do you still get that feeling going into the, the season? Over? Definitely. I think the opener is always a bit different. You've probably heard me say that for nine years, but it's true. I think the opener is different because, you know, there's a lot of anticipation. There's a long time. Again, you know, uh, you, you don't know. You know, you have a good feeling what your team is. You know, you work with them every day and you know them, but, but until you get out there and do it, you know, that then it then it settles you down. You you kind of have a better idea. You know where do we need to work on? You know what things are we doing good? Let's build on the good things. Let's improve on the on the other things. And uh, you get caught in the the moment of uh, getting better. You know once once you start early on, we've been going at this. You know all you know for a long camp, and you're you're kind of anxious, and you just kind of want to see what your team really is. So those the nerves or or the anticipation, I'd say more than nerves, you know, are are always there. I think I'm very excited. Um, you know, I've said this before. I think you know, with the to me, you know, it it, it feels new. It feels like year one. You know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's you know, and and uh, you know, and I guess it's maybe with a lot of the changes that I've had. You know, a lot of changes in the offense and or in the office in general. You know, and I think, uh, you know, for me, it's just an exciting time. Mark, you talked about being concerned players trying to do too much that first game. Do coaches have to? Do oh, yeah. To no question. There, there's always a fine line with coaches is, of too much or too little. You know what I mean? It's, it's Again, you've heard me say this, but it's true. It's not about what we know. You know, it's about what they know and what they can do. You know, we, we, we can stay up there all night, you know, and uh, – work all night and come up with all kind of creative things. But can they do it? You know, can they execute it? And there's always a, a concern of too much, too little. And what can they handle? What can they do? And, you know, let, let's execute, you know. Um, you know, if I've been boring, thank you, but at least, <laughs> it, um, it, you know, there's one thing, you know, you can't beat anybody until you stop beating yourself. You know, you can't beat you, you know, and so the bottom line is winning, you know, so, you know, things that look pretty and fancy are good for writing about. Winning football games is another thing, you know, and so. Um, Do you have a feel for how much they can handle this one? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Mark, you kind of play off of that. You're too much. Pardon me? To play off of your too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, I have confidence in him. You know, again, he's mature. You know, he'll be coached well, and uh, I have confidence in him. You know, again, first, you know, I've said it before, so I'm sure they're listening to my press conferences, but, I mean, first time he went in that stadium, he threw a bomb for a touchdown. That doesn't mean that's going to be play one, but, you know, I'm sure, you know, if you're – I'm a defensive coach. You know what I mean? So I know when I'm playing people like that, I'm telling my whole defense that it's coming. You know what I mean? There's going to be shots, one, two, or three. You know what I mean? And so for us, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be who we are. And, and uh, But we've done that in the past, too. You know, it doesn't mean we've always hit them. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, we, we definitely want to be balanced, uh, but we want to attack as well. Mark, this here, Watkins. having the same wall as opposed to being up, you find yourself 
No, no, I don't. I don't need to tell myself that. I'm, I'm very boring. I've been pointed out. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I don't. I really don't worry about that about myself. I, you know, um, I, I, uh, I have. I have many issues that you all know about, but uh, but uh, you know, uh, being boring isn't one of them. You know, that's it's easy for me. No, so you know, let's try to stay disciplined and not beat ourselves, and uh, and you know, win the football game. And and but I tell you, it's I I am adamant about getting better and pushing this program forward. So that, that's going to go through some peaks and valleys. It's going to go through some peaks and valleys, but we're going to get better. Okay. Do you do you feel a sense of normalcy with the non-conference schedule like last year when you open up the ACC? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. In what way? <laughs> well, why don't you try being the head coach and pick up that schedule? <laughs> <I'll look good. laughs> Tell me how you feel. You know, it's very different. I mean, our league. Uh, I don't need to say anymore. You know, I mean, other Power Five leagues. Take a look at it, top to bottom, and look at ours. I mean, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah. Before he got hurt. Yeah. Is he back to 100%? He's back to 100%. He's getting there. He's suspended for the first four games. Pardon me? Who's that? Who are you talking about? Um, you know, I don't know. I really don't know uh, Terry that well personally, you know, but uh, when I have been around him, he seems a lot like his dad, very charismatic, you know, and, and uh, fun to be around. And, a, and a, you know, just a guy that uh, has really done things right for a long time. So, you yeah. know. Mark, what's J.J. Weaver's status? He's getting better. He's He's been out there. I think um, he's getting close. Um, he has practiced without a red jersey on, so that 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 tells you, you know, to us he's full go. But that that doesn't mean he's at 100 percent. You know, he's you know, so he's got to continue to really get confidence in himself and get 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 some plays under his belt. So we will see. We'll bring him along. Okay, folks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank we'll you. See you tomorrow.